to God's unchanging hand. Amen. We're anchored in the rock. Amen. Amen. We'll change over the service as Brother Aaron comes this evening. With open the eyes of my heart. <clears throat> open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. your power and love as we sing holy 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 high and lifted up shining in the light of your glory pour out your power and love as we sing holy 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 Holy, 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 I want to see you. Amen. Amen. God bless you tonight. Good to be in the house of the Lord. And just appreciate the Lord and all of his blessings on us. And we're going to Amen. So here we are again, battling this COVID once again. And Certainly miss everybody when we're not all together. But uh, we just do the best we can and certainly pray for each one of you that's battling this COVID and the different sicknesses and everything. We certainly want you to know we're certainly praying for you. We certainly, you're definitely on our hearts and and for each one and we just believe that the Lord take care of everybody, and then we'll be able to get back together. Amen. And so, but uh, tonight we're just going to look into the scripture tonight, and y'all just pray for me, and we'll be praying for you. And we're going to go to Luke chapter two, very familiar scripture here, and uh, just kind of pick up from where we was speaking on last time, and. Uh, just looking at some of the things in, in the life of Jesus, and titled this "A Sign Which Which Shall Be Spoken Against." So, let's just all bow our heads and uh, before we read the scripture tonight, our heavenly Father, Lord, we're just so thankful that we can come in your house again and gather. Lord, where you said where were two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst. And, yeah. Lord, we realize it's not just being in close proximity with each other, Lord, but it's gathering in you, Lord. And Lord, we know there's many miles between each one, Lord Jesus, but we just gather in you tonight, Lord. And Father, we just pray that you just come and, and speak to us tonight, Lord. Lord, that you just give us the words that, that need to be spoken, Lord, to bless the people tonight. Lord, just use me... And just help me get out of the way. Lord, as we just have a gift, but Lord, it, ta it takes you to use it. It takes the people to pull on. And we just commit ourselves to you tonight. 
And Father, for each one that's sick, Lord, each one that has a need, Lord, you know what it is. And Lord, to be separated as a church again, Lord, as we go through this COVID situation, Lord. Uh, Lord, it just reminds us to draw a little closer to one another, Father. And Lord, just be with each one, touch each one, Lord. Lord, the needs that were mentioned, Lord, think of Brother Oltick. Lord, that you just touch him in his body, Lord, and the different ones that are battling these things, Lord. Lord, there's so many that have, have needs. Lord, I, I think of the ones that have, I, I've been told. Lord, the ones that have lost loved ones. Lord, the ones that have lost, lost children. Lord, I just pray that you be there and, and be a special comfort to them, Lord. Lord, your scripture said that you would be a comforter, Lord, in a, in a, in a time of trouble. And Lord, there's so many that need, that need that from you, Lord. We know that you'll just go and minister in a special way to each one. Father, we just pray that you bless the, Lord, the ministry around the world, Lord, with it. Lord, as carrying and fighting this battle, Lord, we just always want to be mindful of them and just continue to hold them up. And Father, we just pray and commit all things to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Luke chapter 2, we're going to begin at verse 25, and it says, Behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him, and it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought into in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law. Then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yea, a sword shall pierce through thy own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed." Amen. God bless you tonight. You can be seated. And so, I want to look at, we're looking at the life of, of, of Jesus and picking up from kind of background a little bit from what we were talking about last time when we were talking about in, in the book of, of Matthew, and Matthew uses this expression numerous times, but he talks about that it might be fulfilled. And we go back and, and we look there in, in Matthew, the first chapter, and, and when it talks about the birth of Jesus, and it, and it begins to talk about what was to take place and when when the the angel when Gabriel came and spoke to Mary and told him what was going to take place of what was what was prophesied, and he said, "You shall bring that ye shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins." And said, "All this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. So when we go back and look, and, and many times there, there are several times in, in the book of Matthew where Matthew says that it might be fulfilled, and he goes back and he talks about Jeremiah and the different prophets, the different, different prophecies that were fulfilled in Jesus' life that it would... And so he began to speak of these things, and as we were talking about last time, that when we go back to the Scripture and we realize that when the, when the fulfillment of the, of the Word, when the prophets began to speak, 
You know, the, the people were looking f- forward to the prophecy. But when they began to look, at, look ahead to the prophecies of, of what was being spoken, when they looked forward, they couldn't see clearly. They couldn't see the prophecy clearly because it took a prophet to come back and point them back to the Word because they began to fall away from the Word. And so as, as, the, as we know, as the, the prophets began to speak, you know, because that's how God said that He would declare His Word to His people, that He would, he would make Himself known in His Word. And, and as Amos 3 tells us, that He would do nothing except He would reveal His, his secret through His servants, the prophets. So we know that the prophets began to speak, and, and as He began to make Himself known through the prophets, yet... The, it took a prophet for them to bring to bring them back to the word because and in time because that was the uh, method that God had used and as he began to speak then people began to uh, take on their own interpretation of the word and then it would take a, it would take a prophet to bring the people back to the word so that they could see the word clearly and so as, as time began to continue on, as we look through all the different prophets, as they began, Brother Brown said that they, be, they built the body. So we know that as the word went forth, he began to uh, make himself known in his word. But it was a, but it was a secret to the people. But he, because, and, and as it became to, as we were talking about, as it began to unfold, then it become a mystery. Because then it became something that wasn't clear to the people. As you know, as as our illustration was last time, when you when you try to express something, and and, and you don't know clearly, then then it's a secret. But in the unfolding, there is a revelation, but there's also a mystery. As we were speaking of last time, you know, because. You know, there was a brother Ram said that God had a mystery secret that He wanted to reveal to the people. He wanted to make Himself known. And it, you know, as as I, we were talking last time, you know, if if you have something that that you have shared with somebody, and nobody else knows that, then that's a secret. Which is exactly Amos three when he said it, because when he began to reveal Himself to the prophets, then that was making known of that secret because the prophets saw that. But then they began to declare that. But when it became to, when it began to be spoke, then it, when they began to unveil the, the mystery, yet there was a mystery there because they didn't understand. When God spoke to Isaiah and told him, Behold, a virgin shall conceive. Well, when God spoke to Isaiah, that was, that was a mystery. That was, that was a secret. But when he began to declare that, well, then how in the world is a virgin going to conceive? Well, because that's contrary to the Word, because that's contrary to the way that, that, that thing, <laughs> nature was to take place. Because, you know, let every seed bring after its own kind. And then so it's like, well, this is, this is something new. This is t- well, how is this supposed to take place? Even, it, even Isaiah didn't understand the things that he said. Even when we go back and we look at the prophets and the things that they saw and the visions and they began to speak the, the words, even they didn't understand everything that they were saying. But you know what? They began to express exactly what they saw. Yeah, that's and in that, in that expressing, see, then, then that, that was a time that, yeah, it was people were trying to take, take what they heard and they kept trying to wrestle with it and trying to understand it. But you know, it wasn't time for that. Well, because God is His own interpreter. So when God came to the place, God was going to reveal the Word. He was going to interpret His own Word. He would make it known. But as, as time, we know that, that they, they tried to um, build their own organizations, their own denominations, as Brother Branham said. You know, they took the Word and they uh, tried to build their own understanding and tried to build it all up to themselves and not waiting on God to reveal the Word to them. And we see how they built denominations. So when the word came to be fulfilled, then they missed the word that had been brought to them. 
Because here, here's the fulfillment of the word. Jesus, of, as, as, the, as the prophets built the body, as the opening of the word came, then when the word came forth, then Jesus became that manifestation of the word that had been preached all the way down through history. But when he stepped out there, then they said, Who is this? Even, when, even in the scripture, when we, we talk, when we look at uh, in Isaiah, even when, when Isaiah, when, when the scripture tells us, and we, we begin to look at the scriptures that relate to the Messiah, him coming, and you know, he says that he would send his messenger before his face. And he said there would be one, a voice crying in the wilderness. So when the, when, the, when the scripture began to say that there was a forerunner that would be coming, that would be pointing them back. Then when the, even when the, when the forerunner came, when John the Baptist stepped out, and here he is standing in the fulfillment of the word, and he stands out there and he begins to proclaim that this is the day that these scriptures would be fulfilled. As, as the, now, now's the time that the word would come forth. He said, he said, there's someone amongst us now. He said that I'm unworthy to unloose his shoes. And he began to speak and he began to proclaim to the people. He said, listen, you, you've been waiting for a Messiah all these years. You've been waiting for this fulfillment. You know, many times Brother Branham tells the story. He said, you know, he was talking about Mary and Joseph sitting on the porch reading these scrolls and, and talking about what the, what the rabbis had to say and all these things. And, you know, they were pondering whether this would be true. Would we see this in our lifetime? Is this going to be something that's going to take place? But, you know, and, and no doubt there were people that as, as they began to hear these things, you know, it become dull to their hearing. They just become just, just old wives' fables. It's just something that we do in a religious duty. But there were some people that began to hold on to that and believe that there was one day coming that there was going to be a fulfillment of the Word. The Word would be fulfilled, that He would come just as, just as, as Moses has prophesied and Jeremiah and Isaiah and all these ones that had prophesied that He would come and fulfill the Word. And no matter how, how dark it got and how, how lax the people got or whatever, yet there were some people that had the desire to hear the Word, to hold on to that calling where I don't know where He's going to come. I don't know anything about it, but I do know that the Scripture tells us that the scrolls have told us, the prophets have told us these things, that He's coming. But everybody had their own, own ideas. They had their own thoughts. As Brother Brown talked about, you know, one believed it this way, one believed it that way. When you go back and look and see what the old, and when you go back and read history and some of what the, some of the rabbis taught, it's it's amazing that anybody believed anything. Why? Because but we see that it was that was to be the time and the day in which they lived. That was to be the fulfillment of the word. Why? Because there would be a great light. There would be reve the reve revelation of the Word, but yet there would still be people that would be groping in, in, in gross darkness. In that day, when the, when the greatest light came, when, when Jesus came manifested in flesh, and then people still walked in gross darkness. Why? Because that was the day and hour in which they lived. And it was prophesied that it would take place. And there they are. You know, couldn't believe what was going to take place. So many, so many rabbis had argued over what was going to take place. Would, you know, there's so many of them that when, when they talked about the Messiah coming, they, some would even have argued about whether he would actually be God made manifest or not. Or would he just be a man anointed by God? And all of all the scriptures that, and so when he began, to, when when Jesus came and he began to speak and he began to identify himself, and then he stood there and he told them, and they wanted to stone him, and he said, he said, why would you want to stone me? He said, because you make yourself God. Why well, was contrary to their own own thinking? Brother Ram said it was the own denominational idea that they held on to. And you know, you go back all the way through the scripture and. I believe Solomon tells us, he said, there's nothing new under the sun. And when you, when you go back and you look into the Scriptures, even we, we look at things today of the, of the beliefs that people have of the Scriptures. And you know, there's, 
10,000 different denominations of people believe in the Scripture and they all believe, believe the same, supposedly believe the same book. They all believe the same thing. Well, you know, this, this is the Scripture. This, this is what we base our beliefs off of. But then there's so many of them that have, have taken it and, and cut it and sliced it and pulled it apart. And it's like, well, exactly what part of it will you actually stand on? Is this God's Word or does it contain God's Word? So when they began to, when they began to take these things and, they, and the rabbis began to study the, the Old Testament and, and the prophecies and all these things, and, and no doubt they were great scholar, scholarly men and, and had studied, spent their whole life studying the Scriptures and knew all the words and, and knew every little jot and tittle and all these things, and yet they still didn't understand when the, when the prophecy came, when the fulfillment of the Word came, they still missed it. They still argued over it. But you know, we, we go back and you look at all of these old uh, these rabbis and, and, you, and looking at the things that, that were taught. You know, I mean, so many things when, when you began to look at the prophecies that were in the Old Testament and you began to look at what they had to say. One of the things that stood out to me, I was, I was doing some reading and I was telling Brother Joe and them, you know, we have, we have people still arguing in the in the 70 weeks of Daniel in the prophecy whether there's you know one week left or is there a half week left is 69 half 69 and a half finished or only 69 finished and and you, if you don't want to see something that's convoluted some of these rabbis have tried to figure out even from the old writings, some of, some of them have tried to take and, and put all this together. And I mean, they were arguing years ago about is there one week left in the, in the 70 weeks or is only a half week? And it's like, you know, there's nothing new under the sun. There's still, those spirits are still here. People are still arguing over the same things. And they're still arguing, you know, of the, of the Scriptures it's the same thing that people had way back then. It's not changed any. They're still here and they're still arguing the same points. And so, you know, they still argue all of these, all these points and yet, yet they, they still want to hold and, and still claim these things. But yet when, when the... the rabbis had, had taught all these things and the people had heard all these things and yet it would only take a prophet that could identify the time, the day and the hour in which the people were living and point them in the right direction. Why? Because there had been so much denominational mess up. There had been so much denominational in injection of, of all this denominational seed had been injected into the Word and all this stuff, that, that when He began to preach, that when Jesus came and He spoke to the disciples, I mean, into the, to the uh, Pharisees and the Sadducees and all of them, and He began to point them back to the Scripture. And then when He began to speak, then He told, you know, He began to say to them, you know, search the Scriptures. In them you say you have eternal life, but they are they that testify of me. The scriptures, he said, he said, he said as, as they stood up and said one day, he said, Oh, he said, Abraham is our father. He said, he said, if, Ab if Abraham was your father, he said, Abraham would rejoice to see my day. Abraham rejoiced to see this day. Abraham longed to see this day. And yet you say that you're the seed of Abraham and here you are walking in the day and you still don't see it. And you're blind to the Word. And you've rejected it. But he began to speak to them and tell them, see, he began to show them the Scriptures. And yet they denied the Scripture. Why? Because it, as Brother Ram said, he didn't fit their denominational idea. They had their own, uh, uh, did their own teaching, their own beliefs about these things. So when he began to speak and he began to walk, why? Because it was so humble that it, was, that it would pass the people by. They didn't even see it. When the Scripture tells us that, 
In Isaiah, Isaiah 40, it says, The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. He said, Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low. And the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. So when they began to see, hey, there's forerunner is coming, there's one that's going to be a voice crying in the wilderness to prepare the way of the Lord. And when John walks out of the, out of the wilderness and he comes out there wearing a camel skin, eating locusts and wild honey, looking like a crazy man, when he walks out there into the water and he begins to identify the, the time in which he lived and he began to tell them this is the hour that we are to make known the Christ. The Messiah is coming. And, it, and, it, and we began to speak of, these, of this Scripture, of the, being the voice of one crying in the wilderness. When no, when you know, how do you how do you place this in the scripture when when you when you have the the high priest Caiaphas and all the different ones that were so uh, exalted and and their teaching and and their learning and all these things and when they come out there then you know why didn't well, you know why didn't as Brother Ram said you know he didn't come down on on a great uh, cloud of and and a golden staircase and all kinds of different things, you know, where he didn't just walk down to, to the high priest and identify himself. But he came such a lowly, humble birth. Yeah. And when, when, when here's, here's this wild man walking out, and the Scripture says that, you know, um, you know, every, every mountain shall be, and hill shall be made low, the crooked shall be straight, the rough places made plain. When well, nothing changed. It was still the same rocky ground. It was still the same dirt. It was the still. It was the same. everything was the same. Here we are. How are we trying to find? You know, where is it? Where is this great happening that's going to take place that that the prophet Isaiah told us about? All we're seeing is a crazy man come out of the woods and he's standing there and he's speaking and he's trying to drown people, and he begins to speak of the of this of this man coming. And here, here is this man, and the, only, and the only man that he points to, and he calls out and says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And the only man he identifies is a man that, that had, a, had a bad reputation. His mother had an ill reputation. And that's the man that he's identifying as the Messiah. He's like, you know, this is crazy. And yet, it was a glorious thing that, that all of the prophets began to look for. You know, that Isaiah and all the different ones. And then when it came to pass, it was so lowly. It was so humble. But it was so great. Why? Because that's the way God works. He hides Himself in simplicity. He reveals Himself in simplicity. But the people missed it. But to the ones that were, that were called, those that were, that were Spirit-filled, that were called to, that, to receive that, that were led by the Spirit, those were the ones that called it. And not everyone was called to understand that. Not everyone was called to catch that vision. Not everybody was called to see that. But you know what? They caught what was, what was given to them. No, it, didn't, it didn't answer all of their questions. It didn't, it, didn't, it didn't bring everything into clarity. But there was something that was revealed to them by God that it caught their attention that they held on to that. When, when Jesus began to speak to Peter and He told him, he said, he said, Who do men say that I the Son of Man am? And when He began to identify who He was, that, that the people said, Oh, you're one of the prophets, you know, and all the different things as, as they were talking. He said, But who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I, the Son of Man, am? And see, Peter began to speak by his own revelation because he said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Why? Because it was something that had been revealed to him. Now, it didn't, it didn't answer all of Peter's questions. When, when, when who was it? Nathaniel was sitting under the, uh, the fig tree there, and you know, when Andrew came to him and, and told him, he said, Come see this man. Isn't this the one that, that we've heard about all our lives? Isn't this the one? And then when he came, 
He said, is there any good thing that can come out of Nazareth? He said, well, listen. He said, he said, don't take my word for it. He said, why don't you just come and listen to the man? Why don't you just come and hear what he has to say? And when he, when he come up, and then Jesus told him, said, listen. He said, look, here's a man with whom there is no guile. And he said, he said Rabbi, when, when did you know me? How do you know, how do you know anything about me? He said, he said, before Andrew called you and you sat under the fig tree, he said, I saw you. He said, he said, see, then, then he knew something that took place. Why? Because there was a, a revelation, something that took an experience that he had before Jesus that had caught something. Well, it didn't answer all of his questions. But you know what? There was something that took place that caught him, that he gripped him, that he began to follow the things that Jesus had to say, that he began to look, walk in after Jesus. You know, there's so many times that when people when people get begin to look into the scripture and, and they, they they begin to study these things, you know, they want everything but tied up in a pretty little bow, and they want everything with all of the T's crossed and all the die eyes dotted. But you know, brothers and sisters, that's not the way it is. Why? Because you've got to take it by faith. I mean, when God comes and He begins to reveal things to you, and you catch something by revelation, but you know, that's not going to take it all away. Well, we have to walk by faith. So we just continue to walk by, walk by faith. We can't just hold, hold our own feelings, our own thoughts. You know, there's many people in the Scripture, you know, they, they begin to hold on to those you know the, those things where they where they they it doesn't answer all of the questions, but you know it, it, something began to be revealed to them. As, as we were reading here in the in the scripture in Luke, you know here's Simeon. You know here's a, here's a devout man, a just man. Here's a, here's a man that that had walked before the Lord all these years and 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 had a great reputation. You know many people no doubt loved him and reverenced him. But you know, God began to speak to him and tell him because, you know, he held on to these things and was looking for it. Looking for the, the coming of the Lord to the fulfillment of the Word. It hadn't become dull even in his old age and, and all these things. He still held on to the Scripture, what it, what it had said. It still meant something to him. And even as he got older and, and all the problems that he had, he still was holding on to the Scripture that it would be fulfilled. And it says the Holy Ghost came to him and, and spoke to him and told him, said, listen, you'll not pass away until this that you desire to see will take place. He said, you're not going to pass away until you see the Lord's Christ. Well, you know, no, no doubt there was a lot of people that walked out there and thought, well, you know, he's just getting old. He's just beside himself. But you know what? It didn't change Simeon. He, he held on to that and he still began, no matter what anybody said, it didn't change who, you know, it didn't change his idea. He didn't want because if, if he was a, a man of God and had heard God speak before, then he had already heard that. And you know what? He held on to that. He didn't listen to the naysayers or anybody else or anybody else try to talk him out of it. Do you really think that it's going to be in your lifetime, seeming that this is going to take place? He said, well, you know, all I can do is tell you what God told me. And I'm just going to hold on to it. Why? Because I, I believe what He said, but you know, He's obligated to fulfill the Word. All i got to do is believe it. If He spoke to me, that's all I have to do is hold on to it. I can't, I can't uh, you know, figure out all the X's and O's and all the other, other things. All i got to do is believe it. All i got to do is hold on to it. And He began to testify to the people. And, and no doubt there's a lot of people that thought He was losing His mind. But he still held on to what God told him. And as he began to speak, then, you know, they, as the scripture tells us there, when, when Mary and Joseph brought Jesus into the temple to fulfill the law, God was working on the other end, and he reached out and told Simeon, he said, Listen, he said, the fulfillment of this word, the fulfillment of your desire is here in the temple. And you know, 
He being led by the Spirit of God, no doubt had held on to this, and then the Spirit of God led him to where the child was. And he was able to pick up Jesus in his, in his arms and look upon this little child. And then he says, he said, Lord, now let us thou, thy servant, depart in peace according to thy word, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. And so, and it says, and Joseph and his mother marveled at these things that were spoken. You know, no doubt, they were holding on to, you know, having, having to walk by faith and believe something that was just, you know, a, a miracle and, and nobody else believing it and, and you know, had to t dealing with the ridicule and, and all the things that they had to face and yet they still held on to that word. And then, you know, when they walk into the temple and here's Simeon begin to speak upon the same thing that they knew. There was a revelation to Simeon that the same thing that they held on, he began to identify the same thing. And you know, it marveled, they were marveled by these things. And he said, And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. And when we go back into the Scripture, we know that he said as a set for a fall. Why? Because he would be a stumbling stone. He would be a rock of offense. But you know, there was a rock, a revelation that people would be built upon that they would hold on to, but he would also be for the falling away of people. And a sign which shall be spoken against. Why? Because the sign that would come, it would be just like every other prophet. Being the prophet of the prophets, it would be the same thing as it was back then. Why? Because they, they ridiculed the prophets. They killed them. They stoned them. All the things that happened to the prophets. That he would be spoken against. He said that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. So we know that, that he would come and he would, he would make himself known and he would reveal the secrets of the, of the, the hearts of the people. As he, as he began to do the, the filling, uh, fulfilling the scriptures that was spoken of him. And, and continuing on here, verse 36 of the same chapter, it says, And there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher, and she was of great age and had lived with her husband seven years from her virginity. And she was, was a widow about four score and four years, which departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. And she coming in that instant gave thanks likewise unto God and spake of, of him to all them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. And when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own city, Nazareth. So we see that Anna had also been moved by the Spirit to speak and declaring the same thing that, had, that Simeon had spoken of in the same time. And, may, and you know, and it was just a, it was a double confirmation of what Mary and Joseph had 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 happened in their life, what they had experienced. And here it was when the fulfillment of the word, fulfilling of the law came. Then they began to fulfill and began to proclaim to them the same thing as a confirmation of what they had stood for, what they had believed. And the scripture says, verse 40 says, And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem and Joseph and his mother knew not of it. And they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey. 
and they sought him among their kinsfolks and acquaintance. And they came, and when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem seeking him. And it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he, had said, un and he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wish ye not that I must be about my father's business? And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. But he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these things in her heart, and Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. And, and so we, we know with, as, as they came that, you know, as, as Mary and Joseph had, had this great experience took place in the temple that day, and as and, and Simeon began to, you know, I don't know how many people, you know, but we know, we know that he proclaimed his, his you know, his, his uh, testimony and, and made it known that, that he was going, this was going to take place. And no doubt that, that Anna being a prophetess, being in the temple, then, then she had made known, and no, no doubt she had uh, scriptural experiences and, and, and the different things that happened that, that she knew what was, and, and had prophesied different things to the people, that, that people knew who she was, that she wasn't just some quack, but God had spoke through her. And as, as they took these things away, and yet when the Scripture tells us that they went to the, went to the feast every year, And here they go into the at the Passover, and here they, they go into, into the city and they and they go and, and, and do the and do the customs and everything, but then all of a sudden, you know, then they, they don't pay attention to where Jesus is. But you know, the first thing Jesus they find Jesus, Jesus is in there in the temple talking to the doctors. Discussing the word. Why? Because he was the word, and then he's out there discussing the word with the people. But you know, they became lax about what was taking place, and now all of a sudden they left without him. And as and as they, you know, they were gone, and then they decided to come back. But the first thing that 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 Mary says when she comes back into the temple and sees him, you know, why did you do this? Why, why, why have you treated us this way? Well, you know what? Jesus was exactly where He was supposed to be. I mean, they were the ones, they were the ones that didn't keep up with Him. They were not the ones that was following to find out what was going on. But you know, they left. But she's asking, you know, why did you treat me this way? You know the thing is, is it, you know when it comes to whether what you know when you wonder why what happens in your life and wonder why things have happened and why things go the way that they do. You know the one thing we got to do is stop and realize. You know God ain't the one that left. God didn't move. When things go cold and there's lots of problems in our lives, many times when we look, you know the problem is it's us. We've gotten away from God. Why? Because we allow God to be put on a back burner. We allow God to be put off to the side. We fail to, we fail to keep Him close by and uh, keep our eyes on Him. And all of a sudden, He's gone. And they wonder, why, 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 what's happened? And why, why have you treated me this way? Well, He didn't change. <coughs> no, they were, <coughs> excuse me, they were the ones that left. And she comes into the temple and the first thing that she says is, your father and I have, have sought thee with tears. You know, we're, we're so broken hearted, so worried about you that we've been traveling back to get you. You know, why did you treat me this way? And the first thing he says is, you know, don't you realize I must be about my father's business? Here, here I, I'm, doing, I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to do. You know, and, and you know, as, as the scripture says, you know, they, they were astonished by his understanding and everything. But you know, here she was wondering about him, and, and the first time that, that she begins to speak after all this time, and she walks in there, and you know, 
He had to rebuke her because of her answer, because of what she, of, her, of her testimonies. You know, and here he said, you know, and, and she's the first one that comes up there and says, as the scripture tells us, that he, that he would be a sign that would be spoken against, and she was the one that walks into the temple and declares that Joseph was the father. Here, here he was beginning by her own testimony. But you know, he, you know, he, as Brother Brown said, you know, if 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 Joseph had been his father, he'd been in the carpenter shop. But he was not. He was God was his father. He was in the temple with the word, declaring the word. But you know, nonetheless, he was subject to his parents, and he went with them. And so here, here we see that, that he would always be. Uh, there was a sign that would be spoken against. We'd say all the way through the Scripture that many times when we begin to look at the Scriptures, people begin to look, but they didn't, they didn't hold on to the Word. You know, but, and so as, as, the, as the Scriptures went forth, you know, there's so many of them that, you know, that began to speak and when, when Jesus began to speak and, and go about and, and as the Scripture tells us that He went out and to do good and to, and to heal the sick and, and to fulfill the, the, the Word. And, it, and then the people walked out there and they said, is this not the carpenter's son? You know, and it's, it's not, not seeing that it was the fulfillment of the Word. But the first thing they do is like, well, don't we know his mom and daddy? And here, and here he is out doing miracles and declaring the word to the people. And the first thing that they say is like, don't his mama got a bad reputation? You know, I think, I think they said that his mom and daddy trying to pass off that he, he's virgin born. And when he began to point them back to the Scripture, when he began to declare the Word, the first thing that people could do is look back at his past and say, was he born in Bethlehem? I don't remember him being born in Bethlehem. Do you remember that? You know, then every time all... It wasn't, it wasn't what Jesus said to the people... But it was, it, was, it was always that accusation that could be made. It was always the whispers behind his back that people began to say. And it's like, you know, then they began to stir these questions up in people's minds. That as, as they began to see these things, and, and you know, then, <clears throat> you know, when, when they began to question, when the, when the Pharisees and the different ones began to question him on the, on the different things of the, of the word, and, and, they, and they would ask him questions, and, and you know, then he, then he would begin to ask them questions, you know, as, as like when they, they asked him, you know, was John's baptism, was it of man or was it of God? And, you know, they, they didn't want to answer his question. Why? Because they feared the people. But they didn't, they didn't believe what John had to say. And he began to point them back to the Scripture and say, well, this, this is, if this is true, then, then why didn't you follow it? And then when he began to bring them back to the Word and point it out to them, and then they were like, well, nobody, no man could answer him. Nobody, nobody wanted to answer him. Why? Because they wanted to hold on to their own denominational ideas. When, when, when Nicodemus come to him at night that, and, you know, began to speak to him and said, he said, Rabbi, listen. He said, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, and no man can do these things unless God was with him. But Nicodemus didn't want to come during the day. Nicodemus didn't want to come where everybody could see him. He wanted to sneak around in the middle of the night and come talk to Jesus so nobody else had to see what he, what he had to say. Why? Because, you know, he didn't, he didn't want to give up his prestige or it might, you know, that he would have to answer why was he out talking to Jesus? Why, why would he talk, you know, why, why would he want to know these things? 
But there was something that intrigued him, that, that stirred up inside of him, that he would come to ask Jesus these questions. And then when Jesus began to speak to him, and he would tell him, he said, listen, he said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And when he began to speak these things, you know, then Nicodemus was there and he's like, well, how can I enter back into my mother? And he said, listen, he said, he said it's, it's not being born by the flesh again. He said, but you must be born of the Spirit. He said, except a man be born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And he began to speak to these things. And here, here's a great and learned man of, of, the, of the day. And here he is, and he didn't even understand the things that Jesus had to say. And he began, Jesus began to point him back to these things, and yet he never did, he never did follow in them. But he did hold, you know, he held on for a little while, but he didn't, he didn't continue in it. And all the way through the scripture, we see them as they began to speak. As he began to speak to the different ones all through the, to the, to the people. You know, he said, he, said he spoke to the, to the common people and they heard him gladly. You know, as, as the man that was blind there that day, the young man that was blind and he stood there and, you know, and, you know his parents were asking, you know, you know how, how did this, this, man, this young man receive his sight? And they were so afraid of answering the question. You know, it's like, well, he's of age. You ask him. I'm not. We're not getting involved in this. Well, do you know? Well, do you know how long your son was blind? Do you know that if it was really a true thing? And the, and the young man walks up there, and they were asking about, you know, how did this take place, and who healed you, and all these things. And all, all he could testify was, "Listen, I was blind. I know what it's like to be blind." But you know what? There was one that came and told me that he, could, that he could recover my sight, that I could see. And he said, all I had to do was believe what he had to say and do what he said do, and I received my sight. Right. And you know, there was something, and all of a sudden this man, he stepped up and said, you know, I follow this man. Why? Because, because all of the, back in the Old Testament, y'all said, kept telling me that Jehovah could fulfill these things. He could, he could fulfill, the, he could feel and touch people and, and heal people. The, the psalmist David told us that we had one that, that, could touch, that, that could heal all our diseases. He could, he could do all these mighty miracles. We, we've heard all these things in the Scripture, and yet here's one that stands in our midst and does the miracles and begins to do these things. And he, said, he said, do y'all want to follow Him also? Oh, oh, forbid. Oh, heaven forbid that we have anything to do with this man. This man's Beelzebub. Anybody in their right mind would know this man had a devil. And why would anybody want to have anything to do with him? And yet there was Jesus standing there and said, Listen, he said, if, Je if the devil can cast out, if Satan can cast out Satan, then his house is divided, his kingdom's divided. He said, he said this, is, this is not it, but. He said, but look, he said it was, it was what was spoken of in the Scripture that these things would take place. But yet, and even no matter all that was said and done, yet they did not believe it. They did not hold to it. Why? Because it was, they were the ones that would not hold on to it. It was, it was this um, fulfillment of the Word that they held on to their denominational ideas. And here they are holding on to what God had, had clearly vindicated to the people, and yet they still turned it down and walked away. And many times, you know, we see the, the time and, and the age in which we, we live. We, we know that, that, that time and, and see, all these things would, would repeat themselves again. And we know that uh, as, we, as we've seen the day and the hour that we live, that you know God is still doing the exact same thing that He's always done. What was prophesied in the Scripture that He would do these things. And yet, there would still be those that would not believe. And no matter how much, how much the, 
word was made known and revealed, they still would not believe it. But there's only, but there's a, a predestinated group that would believe. And this is from the message. What was the Holy Ghost given for? Brother Bram says, there's only one way to find it. He said, there was a stone cut out of the mountain without hands that rolled into the world and smashed it out. And it became like wheat or chaff on the threshing floors. He said, let that stone, the Christ Jesus, that stumbling stone to the world, a stone of offense, a laughing stone, a stumbling block to the church, but a precious and a lodestone to the believer. A stone of assurance, a stone of rest. On my resting, I know that I've passed from death unto life. My soul is at rest. Oh, come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest for your soul. A sign that's to be evil spoken of, said the prof to the prophet to Mary. It'll be a sign, sure it will. But it'll be an assurance. It'll be a love. It'll be a satisfaction. It'll be something that you know you've passed from death unto life. Amen. Jehovah God became man, took on our stock, crossed himself from God, and become man. There's the sign. Become He was God and became man, not rich man, but poor man. This is the super sign. You've asked for a sign, said God, I'll give you one, an everlasting sign. He could have come otherwise, as I said, but a baby. Why did he become a baby? When that first little toothless mouth opened in that manger on the first, the first Christmas morning in his little manger from God, and was man ever wit man, come to the world with nothing but still man, what was he trying to do? What was he purposing? He cried like a baby in the manger. He played like a little boy on the street. He told like a man. But yet he was Emmanuel. This is the super sign. God dwelling in the creation that he created. This super sign shall be a sign unto you. Brother Brown, continuing, dropping down to 68. Scroll on down to 68 there. He said, can't you see the real sign? It's Jehovah become one of us. Jehovah God on earth as a fugitive, a pilgrim in the land that he created, rejected and pushed and laughed at and scoffed at. A stumbling stone to the unbeliever, a rock of offense, a devil to the religious world, but an eternal sign to the believer. God with us, the super sign. Did you see it? God made manifest, God presenting himself to the world as a fugitive. Could have come some other way, but chose to come this way. Listen to this. Don't miss it. I think that God had His had in his mind he, it would be appealing to the human being. It is to the believer. It is appealing when God became becomes one of us, but to the starchy, ungodly, a stumbling block. I'll give you the sign. A virgin shall conceive, Emmanuel will be with you. God thought it would appeal to the human race that our God would be one of us, that he would cross himself and become our dust, that he would become our stock, a human stock, the creator who made all things. And again, it fulfilling prophecies, the prophets had saw it. He said another thing, and the world was, and the word was made flesh, made dust flesh and dwelt among us. The Jehovah, the word, became human, became dust and tabernacled with us. Everlasting sign shall never end. Oh, when we think of it, an eternal sign, the super signs of all sign, God becoming one of us. And then he must be the seed of Abraham. Hey, Abraham, of course, was the seed of Eve. He was the woman's seed that was to bruise the serpent's head. But Abraham, if you catch it, he had faith in God, which re which united the spirit of God with the flesh of man. There's where the faith come. There's why he could be the Abraham seed. Not all flesh, but the uniting of spirit and flesh together. God making himself, tearing out, rooting out all evil, bringing into submission the flesh, the dust that he created, and live with you as a partner. Amen. Amen. So, here becomes that sign. 
that everybody that was rejected as he said that they would be spoken of, but yet he came to fulfill the word that he would become one of us, that we could become him. He took, he took on our flesh. He took on our substance. He became, he became sin who knew no sin that we become the righteousness of God. And here he'd come and, and he said, he said, this will be a sign an everlasting sign that, that he would come and he would become one of us and he would toil just like we did and he would face all of the things that we faced, but yet he would, he would do it without sin and he would overcome. And then when, in the end that he would stand up and he would say, listen, I've conquered all of this. He said, he said you know, he, I've come into the world and he said, I've conquered. He said, now you're able to conquer through me. He said, he said, all that, that I have is given unto you. And so now the, the same as being a, an heir of God and, a, and joint heirs with Christ, then all of these things, and then as, as they began to look through the, through the Scripture, then all of a sudden then He became what we are, that we become what He is. Amen. And we still stand today in, in the fulfillment of the Word. It's it, it, today... Why? Because today, in the day and hour which we live, why? We because, why? Because as all the way down through the through the scriptures, we, we realize that why in our day we've received a prophet. Why? Because God never never has left His word, but He became in our day to reveal the word, just like He did back then, and to make it known to the people, to make it known to you and I. Yeah, we you know, and yet, and, and all of that, that that was spoken of, yet there would be people that would come and and ridicule it, and they would stand against it, and they, you know, ask all these questions and say, you know, well, why does it say this and why does it say that, and you can't you can't defend this, and why why do we have all these different questions and all these things, and all they do is get up and, and ridicule and discount the word, why? Because it was spoken of that it would take place, but yet there would be some that would stand up that God would speak to, and they would receive a revelation. God God didn't call us to you know to be apologetics. But God called us to proclaim the truth. I can't, you know, we, you may not be able to answer all the questions. I can't answer all of the questions. But you know, let me tell you something. I know what God has revealed to me, and I can stand on that. I stand on what God has showed me, and I stand on that. And yes, you know what? Every time that someone has stood up, even back then, even when Jesus stood and walked in the Word that He was spoke of, He was made fun of and ridiculed and scorned. And you know what? We still have that same testimony today that we still stand up and take the reproach of the Word. That we still have to be uh, having to stand and, and proclaim the same thing. The world, the world doesn't like us. The world has come why? Because he didn't. They didn't. They didn't like him. They they stood against him. He was outcast of the world, and we are outcast of the world. But you know, we have we have received this word, and it's going to be evil spoken against. But you know what? It's a great thing because you know it was. It's a great thing to us. Why? Because it's a great thing to me. Why? Because the word has made has been made known. Why? Because when, when we pick up the Scripture, it's, it's not, well, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know how, how that, that puts, you know, how we put that together and everything. Because when, when the prophet came, and we've seen that in the day in which, in which we've lived, and then many people have probed at it, and it was so many, I mean, great scholarly men have looked into this Word and, and have studied the Scriptures and all these things, and yet it takes, it takes God using a man that, that, had, that He had uh, prophesied that would come, that He ordained that would, that would come in the last days that would take this Word, and it would open up and it would be made known, and He began to reveal the Scriptures to the people. And yet, and yet in all of that, and all of the great understanding that has been made known, then people have turned it down. Why? Because it didn't suit their fancy. It didn't match, it didn't match their denominational ideas. And then, you know, there's all these different ideas and different camps and all these things, but yet there's still a voice being cried out that is still speaking the truth. And there are still people that still have the ears to hear. Amen. 
<coughs> Excuse me. I thank God for the day in which the hour which we live. God's called us to proclaim this word, to carry the reproach of it. That's, that's, our, that's what God has called us. But you know, it's, it's, not, it's not whether you understand it all. And there's people, you know, that still, they, they, they have gotten, that's, that's all they do is, is they, they find things to ridicule and, and things that, that don't match up and, and all this, and, that, and they just feed on that. But you know what? I'm not, I'm not worried about all the things that I don't understand. I'm walking on the things that I do understand. I'm walking, on the, I'm walking in the things that God has showed me, that, has made, that God has made known to me. That's what I'm rejoicing in. I, I want to thank God because all of these things, even, you know, even when we, we look at the, the life and the Christian life, well, you know, to be like Jesus, to see the things that Jesus had to go through and all the things that He had to suffer. And the Scripture, as the song Brother Ram is talking about, he said, must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? He said, no. There's a cross for me. There's a cross for me to carry. And I want to carry mine gladly. I, I want to be faithful in what God has called me to. You know, we, we, can, we see all the things that have taken place, but you know, the, the, the scorn and the, and the ridicule and all those things, you know, that, that comes with it. But you know, I'm not, I'm not looking at what goes on down here on this earth. I'm not looking at these things. I'm looking for an eternal home. I'm looking for what the end result's going to be. And you know, <clears throat> you know, all the way through the, the history, we, you go back and look and to see what the different ones had to, the price that each one had to pay. You know, we, we go back and you start to look and see that all the ones that gave their lives for this word. And you know, it may, not, it may not be a physical taking of our life, but it's a giving of our life to God. It's a surrendering Amen. of all things to Him. Yeah. You know, we have a lot of people that, that have... Have to, have to face a lot of heartaches and problems. But you know what? I'm not, I'm not looking at <clears throat> what goes on down here. I'm looking for that eternal weight of glory. I'm looking for what God has in store for us. Keep our eyes on the prize to know what God has in store for them that love Him. Amen. God bless you tonight. Let's stand. <clears throat> What you got? All right. Amen. God bless you tonight. Dear panteth for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. Desire and I long to worship Thee. For You alone are my strength, my shield. To You alone does my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire.
desire and I long to worship Thee. You are my friend and you are my brother even though you are my King. I want you more than the other so much more than anything for you alone are my strength my shield to you alone does my spirit yield you alone are my heart's desire and I long to worship Thee. I want You more than gold or silver only. You can satisfy. You alone are the real joy giver and the apple of my strength my shield to you alone does my spirit yield you alone are my heart's desire and I long to worship thee amen God bless you tonight <clears throat> appreciate each one of you Continue to remember each one in prayer. And as we go tonight, we'll just, just speak to the author and dismiss. And certainly remember each one in prayer. And we love you and certainly hold you up in prayer. And we'll be back, Lord willing, 10 o'clock Sunday morning. And uh, one service. Amen. We'll continue to remember Brother Luis. He'll be preaching Sunday morning. Looking forward to that, brother. Lord. Amen. Well, God bless you tonight. Let's just all pray and be dismissed. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, Lord, we just so thankful, Lord, that we've been able to gather in your house tonight, Lord. Lord, come speak, Lord, the words of life. Lord, to hear from you. Lord, this word is, Lord, as the scripture says, we knew that it would be ridiculed and put down. Lord, that it would be evil spoken of, Lord. But Lord, there's a group of people, Lord, it's precious to. Lord, it's all, it's life to us, Lord. It means everything to us, Lord. Lord, when we think of, Lord, the price that You paid, Lord, that You come and give up everything, Lord, to come and walk this human existence, Lord, to die on a cross. Lord, to take on our shame and our agony. Lord, to make a way back for us, Lord. Lord, that You paid our price for our healing. Lord, we're just so thankful for that, Lord. And there's so many that need a healing touch from You, Lord, but Father, we realize, Lord, that it's been a, a finished work at Calvary. And Lord, now we just claim it for those that, have, that are sick in their bodies, Lord, that need a touch from You, Father. Lord, we know that You'll go and touch each one. Lord, for those that are in the hospitals and the different places, Lord. Lord, we want to stand and uphold our brothers and sisters, Lord. Lord, that need a touch from You. And Father, we want to thank You for those that, have, that You've brought through these things, Lord. Lord, we've seen You work in people's bodies, Lord. When, Lord, when it didn't look like there was a way, Lord, but You made a way. And Lord, we're just so thankful for that. Lord, keep each one... Lord, each one that travels on the road, 
Father, we just pray that you watch over and keep us and bring us back at the appointed time. Lord, we pray that you bless our brother Luis, Lord, as he began it, that he would be speaking Sunday, Lord. Lord, just touch him mightily. Lord, give him the words that we'd have need of, Lord. Lord, just continue to be with the bride around the world, Lord. There's so many that have different different situations that they're in, Father. But, Lord, we continue to uphold them before you, Lord. Lord, we know that you'll meet each, each need, Lord. You'll touch each one. And Father, we just commit all things to you. We commit ourselves to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. God bless you tonight. <clears throat>